Theoretically, aerobic respiration could generate a maximum of 32 ATP molecules. Um, okay. However, the actual yield of ATP produced is found to be lesser. So suggest why does aerobic respiration yield fewer molecules of ATP than a theoretical maximum? So what you can learn from this question is every single detail that you learn in your syllabus, you need to know because I've taught this before. Okay, you cannot say that oh, yeah, this one small matter, I, I'm going to skip it. Two marks, you know. Okay, two marks is the difference between A star and A, A and B, B and C, yeah? fail and pass. So go to the PowerPoint for this section. Right, where is it? Huh? Oxidative phosphorylation here. Okay. So if you look at this ATP count, you see theoretically, I'm talking about total ATP that you can get from respiratory chain based on counting the number of NADP, FAD, uh, sorry, NADH, FADH, released to ETC, how many ATP you can produce, we have already calculated from here. Okay, calculated from here already. So every NADH will give you three ATP. Every FADH will give you two ATP. You add up theoretically, it gives you a total of 34 ATP from oxidative phosphorylation, and you've got four more from substrate level phosphorylation, total theoretically 38 ATP, okay? But in actual case, we will not get 38 because what I've taught you is that ATP in theory is this one here, but ATP in practice is this one here. Why? Because certain percentage is used to actually 25%. Okay, of the total energy from ETC is used to transport ADP into mitochondrion and ATP out of mitochondrion. So this is what I have taught you. So if you have written these two points, you get the full marks already. Okay, so that's why out of total ATP that's been produced, some of them are already being used up just to transport ADP and ATP. So that's why total available to any other part of the cell is 25% less. So that's why um, practically is less versus theoretically. And of course, if you look at the mask scheme, there are more answers to that, which are also logically correct. So we'll take opportunity to learn from the mask scheme. Okay. Uh, of course, based on the mask scheme, you must check that this is a OCR. OCR paper is not CIE paper. So based on, in terms of uh, what are the answers that have got higher chances of getting marks in your CIE exam is, of course, whatever you've learned in your syllabus, okay? So, therefore, I have added two additional points here, which is point number one and two, which you have learned in your syllabus, and also is in your textbook. Whereas the rest of the points three to six, they are not in your textbook, okay? So, therefore, if a question come out, it's a two marks question, you want to give answer number one and number two, not three, four, five, six, because I cannot guarantee you get marks if you write three, four, five, six. Because they will draw a line what is more important, what is not so important, what is in syllabus, what is not in syllabus, whatever in syllabus is more important. So there'll be a line that they'll draw across and anything below that line, no mark. It means what is more important in syllabus. Okay, so one and two you have learned, so one and two you need to write. So transporting a, a molecule, you must say from where to where. Okay, you just say, oh, I used to transport ATP. It's, it's too general. It's, it's from where to where because the cell is so big, right? So which part of the cell? So it must say from mito to cyto. Okay, so let's look at other, uh, where, are, uh, where are other part of the cell that uses up the ATP? Eh? Now, some ATP is used to transport pyruvate into the mitochondrion. Some ATP are used to transport reduce NAD into mitochondrion. This one makes sense because if you look at the um, oxidative phosphorylation, uh, coming back to here, okay? Here, right? So glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm and it produces two pyruvates and two NADH plus H plus per glucose molecule. Remember it's per glucose molecule, not per mole. Eh? So these two right uh, molecules will need to be transported into the matrix of mitochondrion 
If you want 100% of them to be transported, therefore you need an active transport, which requires ATP. So it makes sense that, okay, to transport pyruvate as well as uh, NADH from cytoplasm to the matrix of mitochondria, you need ATP. So that is a um, valid answer. Okay, so that's number three and number four. Number five, they say that some energy released in ATC is not used to transport H+, it is released as heat. So you learn that from the H+, uh, from the electrons and proton that are being transported in the ETC here, right? You transport hydrogen, and after that, you transport electrons. So as you transport them, some of the energy can be used to pump proton, creating proton gradient, passing through the stock particle ATP synthase for ATP to be synthesized. But some of the energy, actually, they've been lost as heat. So they are not being used to pump the proton to produce the proton gradient <clears throat> to give rise to the synthesis of ATP. So you can say that some of energy, which you have calculated theoretically, is lost as heat uh, at the ETC. Okay. And then uh, point number six, not all the H plus movement is used to generate ATP, which is true. Um, so you, you see here, this H plus, we assume that the H plus uh, due to the H plus that is being pumped across from the matrix to the intermembrane space, which is here, okay, from the matrix to the intermembrane space, whatever proton that's being pumped into here due to the flow of hydrogen and electron in ETC, these are the protons that will pass through the stock particle which leads to ATP synthesis from ATP and PI. So this is, this is theoretically, these are the protons that will actually give rise to ATP, okay? But sometimes there are also protons that comes from water, okay? H plus and OH minus, which passes through, uh, what did the mask scheme says? Okay, come on. Not all the H plus is used to generate ATP, through the ATP synthase. So that means to say that, I will say that whatever H plus pass through the ATP synthase will actually lead to ATP synthesis. Okay, whatever H plus. Every three H plus that diffuse across the ATP synthetase or synthase will give rise to one ATP synthesis. So that statement for me is not very accurate. Huh? This statement, not all H plus that move back across, okay, correct, correct, this is correct. Not all H plus that move back across the membrane will give rise to ATP because, uh, this is correct, huh? the H plus that only pass through the ATP synthase can give rise to ATP. If let's say you've got a channel protein for H plus here, okay, and this H plus pass through the channel protein, then, of course, no ATP can be synthesized. So that's what the statement is trying to say, right? Sometimes when you take a certain drugs and the drugs, uh, uh, the drugs form uh, a proton channel protein in the inner membrane of mitochondria, that will cause a leakage of H+. So there'll be less H+, that passes through the ATP synthetase, so therefore there'll be less ATP synthesized. So that's what the statement is trying to say. Not all H+, that passes through the inner membrane of mitochondria will give rise to ATP unless they pass through the ATP synthetase. Okay? So that's what the statement is mentioning, which is actually correct. Okay? So please remember this one. Huh? I, I actually am very happy that this question come up in your trial exam. So at least if you realize you're not learned this part, you still have time to learn them up. And you realize that any other small, small part that you have not learned, please learn them up. Okay, as long as you've got time. Okay, D. So let's look at the question D. Where's my question paper? Here. Okay. Okay, D and P. So they say that this D and P, uh, whatever they mentioned there, okay, this is a molecule that can transport proton. Okay, what's happening? 
Okay, a molecule that can transport proton across the inner membrane of mitochondrion here. Membrane. So allowing protons to leak out of the intermembrane space. So this is where you make the proton pass through the membrane without passing through the stock particle, right? It passes through this uh, DNP. So suggest and explain the effect of DNP on the, um, on the aerobic respiration in the human cells. So total mark for this question is, D is how many marks? Huh? Four marks. So, you look at this chart here, okay? So, if you have got an additional channel protein here, which is the DNP suddenly, okay? So, what, what will happen to the aerobic, did they ask him about aerobic respiration? Yes, this whole process is aerobic respiration. Oxidative phosphorylation is the last stage of aerobic respiration, okay? Because you already know aerobic respiration is made of glycolysis, link reaction, Krebs cycle, oxidative phosphorylation. So they ask you what will happen to the aerobic respiration. Okay, the last part here. Okay, we're going to explain step by step. First, will the ETC still function normally? Yes, it will. Okay, because this DNP does not affect ETC, right? The hydrogen carriers are still there. The three electron carriers are still there. So therefore, ETC will still function normally to transport, pro, uh, to transport hydrogen atoms as well as electrons. So once there is a transportation in ETC, which means to say so, point number one, um, ETC will function normally. Okay, point number one. So point number two, if ETC function normally, which means to say that proton, will be pumped from the mitochondrial matrix into the intermembrane space. So that's the second marking point. And because there's a pumping, point number three, proton gradient will be generated. And point number four, because there's a proton gradient generated, proton will diffuse down its concentration gradient. Okay? But now because we have got this additional DNP here, so the proton will actually, a lot of the proton will then diffuse across the DNP instead of stock particle. So a lot of the proton will diffuse across the DNP. So this is the fourth marking point. So movement of molecules, you must say from where to where to where by what process. So it's diffusing, the proton is diffusing from the intermembrane space into the matrix through the DNP by diffusion. So that's one mark, okay? So therefore, you're left with less H plus ion that will diffuse across the stock particle. Now, um, in the mark scheme, the examiner is looking for this enzyme, ATP synthetase. It's because when the proton passes through ATP synthetase, which will lead to ATP synthesis. So therefore, the word ATP synthesis is more important than stock particle. It's a keyword. Okay, so therefore, there'll be, because you've got less proton, therefore, there'll be less ATP being synthesized. So that's the answer for this question. What will happen to the aerobic respiration? Okay.